Yo, it's Lux from Server Pro, and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to install and use the Residence plugin. To install Residence, head over to the plugin page, which will be linked in the description. Once there, click this link here, which will lead you to the page where you can download the plugin from for free. However, we do highly recommend that you purchase this plugin as it helps and motivates the developer to keep releasing updates. To download the plugin to your panel, right click on whatever version of Residence you want. At the top is of course the latest version which we're going to be using. Then copy the link address and go back to your panel. Navigate to your plugins folder, click the upload files button and paste the link into the upload from web section right here. Then click upload. Now I also have Essentials X and Vault to demonstrate the economy feature that this plugin utilizes. But please know that Vault is necessary for this plugin to work. Once you have that, restart your server and you're ready to go. To show you all the commands you have available, just type in a slash res and then a question mark and then the page number you want. A handy command to check information about your limits, type in slash res limits. This here are the default settings. Let's actually now create the residence. Select an area using the selection tool. As the default, it's a wooden hoe. Left click on the bottom corner of the area you want and then go around and click the opposite top corner. You can see a nice visual of the area that's being selected. To see the cost of the selection, type slash res select and then cost. If you want to change the size of your selection, Stand inside the selected area and face into the direction you want to expand. Then type slash res select expand and then the number of blocks you want to expand it by. You can also make your selection smaller by typing slash res select contract and then the number of blocks. When finished, type slash res create and then the residence name. It can't have any spaces or special characters and must be unique so please ensure that it is. Of course, you can also expand or contract your current residence. Again, to do this, stand inside it and look in the direction you want to expand or contract it by. Then type slash res expand or contract and then the number of blocks. This will automatically charge your in-game account. If you want to find out how much it would cost you before you do the expand command, we have to do it slightly differently. Let me show you how to do this. First of all, select your residence by typing slash res select residence, then your residence name, and then the area of the name. Most of the time, it's likely going to be called main, unless you've changed it. I'm going to quickly check the cost of this current residence selection, since we're going to need that later on. Now you can use the selection command we used at the start to either expand or contract the selection. After that, type in slash res select cost again, and this will show you the cost for the whole selection. Please note that this is the cost for the whole selection and not just the expansion. So what you'll need to do is subtract the cost of your residence from the whole selection. Then after you're finished and you want to confirm the changes, type in slash res area replace, then the residence name and then the area name. You can also have multiple areas for each residence. These are physical areas that can either be within the residence or completely separate from it. For example, let's go over here and claim this tower. To add an area to your residence, type in slash res area, add, then the residence name and then an area name. Now the tower belongs to your actual residence as you can see. There is also another feature called subzones which are areas that must be within your residence, but they do not cost anything to create. But I'll talk more about those later. Now I'll quickly go over some residence flags. Flags are basically rules that govern what happens inside your residence. Type slash res set inside your residence and it will open a GUI which you can change. If you're not standing inside it, type in slash res set and then the residence name. Some flags will be there by default, like hostile mob spawning, animal killing, ability for others not to place blocks will already be disabled. Of course, these default flags can be changed in a config. To set things to true, just left click the icons. To set things to false, right click the icons. To make it revert to the default behavior, or if you're in a subzone and you want to have it the same as the larger residence, shift right click and then set it to removed. 
You can set individual flags for specific players in the same way. Type slash res pset and then the player name. In this case, I'm going to allow my other account to build in my residence. And as you can see with my other account, I can build in the residence. However, I cannot do anything else like destroy blocks since I did not set that. If you don't want to do this individually, you can use grouped flags to give multiple flags with one command. There are a few default grouped flags that you can use for now. However, you can create your own in the flags.yml config. By default, in a residence, igniting fire and fire spread is turned off. The grouped flag for that is called fire, so you can type slash res set, then the residence name, then the flag name, which is fire, and then either true or false if you want to allow or deny it. And since I've made the changes, now people who are not in my residence can use things like flint and steel and set fire to blocks. And of course, fire will spread as well. You can also do this for specific players. There's a trusted group flag, which can be given to others. To do this, type in slash res pset, then the player name, then the flag name, which is trusted, and then either true or false. This will give all of these flags shown in chat to that specific player. There are many other features and options to this plugin. I'm going to talk about a few of them here, including subzones. You can teleport to residences, for example, but before that, let's actually set the teleport location. If you do not set it, it will teleport you somewhere in the middle of the residence. To set the teleport location, stand inside the area you want to teleport to and type in slash res tp set. To actually teleport to the area, type slash res tp and then the residence name. You can of course rename residences. To do this, type in slash res rename, then the old residence name and then a new one. If you want to rename an area in the residence, then type in slash res rename area, then the residence name, then the old area name and then the new one. Another thing you can do is change the residence enter and leave messages with slash res message enter and then the message or slash res message leave and then the message as shown here. As I said before, you can also create subzones. These zones must be inside your residence areas and are created for free. A cool feature about this is that they can have different flags from the rest of your main residence. For example, if you want to have a monster farm inside your residence, you can create a subzone for that and enable monster spawning just in the subzone. To create one, select an area within your residence just like usual, then type in slash res subzone and then the subzone name. You can also teleport to subzones as well. It's a very similar command, just type in slash res tp, then the residence name dot and then the subzone name. Setting the teleport location is the same as before, except you have to stand inside the subzone itself to do that. And finally, if you want to delete your residence, type slash res remove and then the residence name. After that, just confirm that you want to remove it and then you're done. There are many other features like renting and selling your residence, as well as having shops, However, I'm not going to go through this in this tutorial. If you want to find out more, check out the plugin page and the wiki, which will be linked in the description. Now let's go over the configs. Navigate to the main config, and this here is commented very well and explains what these options mean. However, I'll go over a few of the important ones. For example, you can change the selection and info tools here and here. These options here will change the way your selections are made. You can ignore the Y axis, which means that when you select an area from the top of the sky to the bedrock, you can change the max number of residences and subzones players can own and rent. Going lower are the backup settings and the residence cleanup options. Below here are some anti grief settings, which are all customizable. This here is the group name that will be given to players if you're not using permissions. You can change and customize this default group in groups.yml config. If you don't want to use permissions, you can disable it here. Same goes for the economy. If you don't want to use it, disable the enable economy option here. Going down, you can enable or disable the visualizer and change its options. Of course, you can also enable and disable the flag GUI option here and a bunch more. There are a ton of options, so please go through all of them and read the comments. If you don't understand something, read the wiki, which will be linked in the description. 
In the flags.yml file, at the top you have the global world flags. The ones below are permission flags, which are the flags players can change within their residence. These here are the GUI items for each flag. These are the default flags for a residence and the ones below are the flags when you create a residence. Lower are the default flags when someone rents their residence. These here are the group flags. So when we use slash res pset and then the reducer name and trusted true, this is where the flags came from. You can add more grouped flags or remove as you wish. It's all up to you. And even lower, you can completely disable whatever flags you want. The last thing in this config is a blacklist of items which you can add to the list. In groups.yml config, you have a default group, which of course will be used by default, and then a group called next group, which is just another template. If you have permissions, you can give a user or a group this permission here to assign them whatever group you want. In this case, it's the group called next group. You can go through this config and change whatever is necessary since every option is explained by the comments. Apart from that, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any plugin suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you have any issues, contact our support team. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.